Gravel bikes are wildly popular because they're one style of bike that lets you enjoy a wide variety of terrain from single track to pavement and almost everything in between. Today we're putting two of our favorite bikes head to head, the Salsa Warbird and the Cannondale Topstone Lefty. If you want to learn more about these bikes, we've put links to the reviews in the description. But now, let's get into how each bike approaches gravel. Launched in 2013, the Warbird here is a classic gravel bike that's good for a wide range of uses, from gravel racing all the way up to multi-day bikepacking adventures. It's light, lively, and responsive, and feels a lot like an endurance road bike that just happens to have fat tires. It also has great vertical compliance due to Salsa's proprietary Class 5 vibration reduction system, which they call VRS. It pairs wishbone-shaped seat stays with flattened chain stays to remove road vibration in the rear. The Warbird is compatible with aftermarket suspension gravel forks and 650B wheels, but the build we're testing today has a stock rigid fork and 700C wheels. Cannondale thinks the future of gravel is travel, and the Topstone Lefty takes a completely different approach. This full suspension gravel bike has a 30mm fork and 30mm of rear travel measured at the saddle thanks to its kingpin suspension system which relies on engineered flex in the frame instead of a shock and linkage system. The result is increased comfort and rear wheel traction when seated, and maximum pedaling efficiency when out of the saddle. Our Topstone is a beefcake of a bike that's super capable on single track and rough terrain with tight but predictable handling. To compare these two different approaches to the gravel concept, I came up with some segments on this mountain behind me that should let us look at performance on climbs, pavement, and single track. First, I'm going to race them up a fire road climb to see which is faster uphill. The clock doesn't lie, and I expect to see some major differences. I'll also be looking at each bike's compliance as I ride over the different surfaces on the fire road. Then, I'm going to see how these bikes perform on pavement. I'm going to ride a section of road that has fast sweeping turns and rolling hills. I'll be looking at how they turn at speed and also how they feel climbing on smooth roads. Finally, I want to hit the trails and see how these bikes stack up on single track. Time will determine the ultimate winner, but I'll also be looking to see how stable they feel at speed and also how they handle tight turns and rough trails. minutes 54 seconds on that climb there were some pretty rough bits uh, I have to say on some of the washboard rocks the salsa was definitely bouncing me around a bit smooth the gravel I could get momentum going that felt pretty good and right on the final pitch where things smoothed out a bit I was able to step on the gas and get some decent speed over the top so overall bike felt great climbing Rough stuff was a little bit choppy, but I liked how this one felt. Four oh six. That was twelve seconds slower. Doesn't feel like a huge difference, but if you factor that out over a much larger climb, then that twelve seconds gets pretty big pretty quick. I have to say though. The suspension, the compliance on the top stone felt really great on this climb. Uh, it was definitely slower, but traction was superior both in the saddle and out of the saddle. Uh, in places where on the Warbird, I definitely had to sit down because if I stood up, I'd lose the back wheel. That wasn't the case here with the top stone. So the top stone definitely won the game as far as compliance goes, but the extra weight I could really feel. Topstone really impressed me on the pavement. 
I didn't have high hopes for it because it's a little bit of a heavier bike. It's got the suspension, it's got the fatter tires, but to be honest, it has really sharp and lively handling. The Topstone took the high speed turns much better than I expected. Now, would I line up for a Criterium on this bike? No, but for long pavement transfers in between gravel sections, this bike was really good. The Warbird actually underwhelmed me. I expected it to outperform the Topstone handily because it doesn't have any suspension, it has bigger wheels and narrower tires, but it was a little bit more dull. The qualities that make this bike perform well on the single track actually detracted from the ride quality on the pavement. So in this round, I'm actually gonna award the win to the Topstone because it has a much sharper handling and it has a much more lively feel out of the saddle. Like most of you, I expected the top stone to be really good on the downhill. The single track is rough, it's rocky, it's got some holes in it, and the suspension of the top stone was fantastic. The fatter tires also helped a lot. I felt like I could carry speed around the switchbacks better. Interestingly though, on the mile and a half segment, I was only 31 seconds faster on the top stone than the salsa. So while I expected the top stone to be faster, I expected it to be a lot faster. So the salsa impressed me by being not that far behind. In fact, 31 seconds over five minutes could easily be a few bad lines. So while the salsa will never catch up to the top stone entirely, it's not that far off the mark. We tested two bikes that take radically different approaches to conquering gravel. In round one, the salsa was clearly better on the climbs. Overall weight ruled the day, and the smoother ride of the top stone was not enough to overcome the four pound weight penalty. For round two, we hit the road, and this one surprised me. I expected the salsa would be the clear winner, but surprisingly, the top stone was far more agile and lively on the pavement. The qualities that make the salsa super on rough gravel actually made it feel a little bit sluggish on the road. Finally, we hit the single track, and no surprise here, the top stone was the clear victor. The Warbird is the proverbial jack-of-all-trades gravel bike. It's quick uphill and really responsive to input from the pedals. It's a great bike for gravel races, and it's also a super choice for multi-day bikepacking adventures because it's loaded with extra mounts for bags and bottles. The Top Stone is rugged and adventurous. It excels on the rough stuff and holds its own on the pavement. It's not the fastest uphill, but the added compliance from the suspension makes for amazing rear wheel traction. It's a comfortable and playful ride and a great choice for the adventurous types who are more concerned with pleasure than speed. Do you like the classic versatility of the salsa or are you more drawn to the rugged nature of the top stone? Which bike do you want to see in your garage? Let us know in the comments and be sure to subscribe to Bicycling for more videos.